Boom. Particular. Mushroom. Hello, everyone. This is Particular Mushroom. Today, we're discussing the tips, tricks, secrets, exploits, and glitches in Pianta Village in Super Mario Sunshine. Boy, that needs a shorter name. How about... Particular Spaghetti. It's perfect! Pianta Village has always been my favorite course in Super Mario Sunshine. The unforgiving fire goop, the wildly hidden blue coins, and the multitude of mushrooms are all things to write home about. However, that design... I mean, this course is literally a slab of dirt on top of a giant tree over an endless chasm. And people live there! <laughs> so naturally, such a great design will have some great findings, right? Oh yeah, buddy. First, we'll start with secrets. So secrets are areas or objects in the game that are not known by many players. That definition is loose, as I'm basically going off my experience here. The point being that they might not be secrets to you, but they were secrets to me. Anyway, back when I first played Super Mario Sunshine, I was given one of those guide things. And that guide spoiled many things for me, including the secret shine in the sun and the hidden blue coin in the moon. They are pretty trivial once you know about them, but how is one supposed to figure this out in the first place? How would you know to stand in this particular spot and spray flood in this particular direction? Well, it turns out, these secrets have a secret. If we bother this orange Pianta with the purple shirt in episodes 5 and 8 of Pianta Village, she'll spill the intel on these two secrets. It legitimately says exactly what you're supposed to do. Don't go on top of the yellow mushroom and don't spray the moon, whatever you do. Well, isn't it convenient that I have a flood on my back? I wonder what I'm gonna go do. Our next secret takes place in episode two and is probably the last secret you would ever find on your own because it's just so pointless. Episode 2 does not have 100 coins. It doesn't even have 50 coins. And there aren't even any enemies to lose life to. But if for some reason you want coins, climb on top of the golden mushroom and give it a ground pound. And the only word I can use to describe my feelings about it is... Why? Taking this ground pound theme with us, Head back to episode 1, Chain Chomplets Unchained. If you've ever tried to get the 100 coin shine on this episode, you may have gotten stuck on 40 or 49 coins. It may seem like that's just it. There can't be more than 50 coins hiding in this episode, can there? Well, I wouldn't be talking about it if that wasn't the case. First, if we jump into the empty bath and give it a ground pound, 13 coins will come out. Once we're in the bath, it's pretty obvious it's hiding something, given the special camera angle. But what reason do you have to jump in there in the first place? The big bank in this episode, though, is the flaming mushrooms, with a whopping 48 total coins. It's a well-hidden secret, because for some reason, putting the fire out was good enough in episode 3. But in episode 1, we have to additionally... Guess what? ground pound it. Don't worry, we've got one more ridiculous ground pound for you in episode 5. On the village underside, we've got a party of giant mushrooms with party coins and party one-ups everywhere. This mushroom, for some reason only this mushroom, when ground pounded, gives 20 coins. This, along with the other 40 coins down here, not only makes this the quickest 100 coin shine in Pianta Village, but also makes this episode one of the fastest ways to grind extra lives. In just over a minute, I was able to earn the 1-up by collecting 50 coins, these three 1-ups hanging around the party, and finally this last one before falling into the pit. 
That's a net total of four lives, five if you can get that last one without dying. And there's some mechanical skill that goes into this path as well, making it a lot more engaging than saving piantas over and over again. And while we're discussing strategies, let's talk about episode four, Chain Chomp's Bath. Instead of cooling this chomp down first thing, grab onto that steak and let him free, for now. You see, Chain Chomp is afraid of Mario more than he is afraid of his bath. Additionally, Chain Chomp can't turn around. He can only choose a direction when coming to a fork in the road. So using Mario to block off unwanted directions, we can lead Chain Chomp right over to the conveniently sized bath and quickly drag him in. And uh, now there's no place to refill your water tank, so watch out. Now it's time to get into the glitches. The laziest way to define a glitch is a wall clip, as most glitches in Super Mario Sunshine use them. However, we've also got teleportations, and weird limbo states, and whatever that is. It's basically a malfunction of proper gameplay mechanics, which again is a bit arbitrary, since we don't know what the developers consider proper gameplay mechanics. But I think you'll agree that these are all glitches. First, let's talk about the non-episode specific glitches. When we first drop into Pianta Village, we come across this bridge. If we spray the bridge, the water doesn't stick around like other surfaces, so it appears that we can't water slide across this bridge. However, if we spray at either ends of the bridge, the water that hits the ground will carry over to the bridge, and if we can belly flop onto that bridge water rather than the grounds, you'll successfully water slide. The only thing is we can clip through the bridge, which is probably why we can't drench the bridge in the first place. Whoops, small correction. Looks like you can slide onto the bridge on this end. Next, we're going to clip into Pianta Village, so find the tree on the left with the orange mushrooms. You'll want to hover along this plane until you hit the mushroom. You'll start to clip into the tree, and then you'll need to turn around so that instead of falling through the tree, you land inside the ground. You're now inside the dirt slab of Pianta Village. Congratulations! Uh, but you've got to continually jump or else you'll die. But you don't have the most space, and a double jump can easily pop you right out. So I recommend using the hover nozzle in between jumps. Unfortunately, this glitch doesn't provide anything really useful. But if we pop out under a body of water, we can walk around without swimming. The camera angle has this secret base vibe to it. And I can make Mario do this. What do you, what do you think he's doing? This next glitch can only be done in this particular way at night. So select an odd numbered episode. At the end of this stream, I started to wonder if we could swim on the other side of this barricade. Sure enough, at the third pole, we can. That's pretty neat as is, but if we move around too much, whoa. We just sort of teleport to the bottom of the chasm. Guess it's not endless after all. We can walk from one end of the stage to the other, but otherwise there's not too much to do here. And we can only get out with exit area magic. Pianta Village sure looks awkward from this far away though. Next, we're heading back to episode one to launch some chomplets. Once wrangling their tail, chomplets basically act like billiard balls, which can be a lot of fun to bounce around with. What we're really interested in though, are these sloped rails. If we grab a chomplet from the top of the slope and aim them towards the bottom, like right there, we can fling our chomplet over the rail and out of bounds. And then it will sort of teleport back inside. Welcome back. This is a neat graphical glitch on its own, but sometimes if the chomplet doesn't get over the rail, it'll get stuck in the rail. 
That doesn't even look like it's stuck. Yeah, try and get me all you want, Chomplet. You're stuck. Oh wait, it's, it's, oh no! Of course, we have to go over the most useful glitch in Pianta Village. Head over to episode five, where this crayon squiggly is blocking our way. Normally we need Yoshi to get past undulating freak squiggle, but with some clipping, we won't have to bother with it. So line up perpendicularly with this tree, hold down R and switch to the hover nozzle, and then clip into this tree accordingly. Now this next part takes a little guesswork. We need to fall enough that we slide under the platform, but not so much that the boundary kicks us out. If we did it right, the screen will shake as we siphon ourselves right into the secret box. This allows us to beat this episode without Yoshi and collect all 11 of Pianta Village's shines. Although unfortunately not every single blue coin, you still need Yoshi for that one. Our final category is exploits and tricks. Now, some of these might be glitches in your book, but as far as I'm concerned, the game is working properly. We just exploit the game's mechanics to produce some interesting results. Let's start with episode seven, Shadow Mario Runs Wild. This is the only episode in Pianta Village where we can collect a shine on top of goop. Every other shine spawns on top of a goopless surface, but in episode seven, the shine spawns wherever we defeat Shadow Mario. So all we have to do is defeat Shadow Mario over some goop. Sounds easy, right? No. I was able to get it once on accident, but trying to reproduce it took me hours. This is because the killing blow on Shadow Mario needs to not wash off the goop underfoot. You have to give him a sweet water caress. This is difficult as it is, but the other issue is Shadow Mario doesn't have a health bar. You can guess how this is a problem, but the worst is when you hit 10 good caress shots in a row, and then the one you mess up topples him over. On top of the fire goop and the wind freaks, this can become infuriating. And if you're wondering why we can't just use some goop jellyfish, they don't appear in this episode. You could very easily get lucky on your first try, but honestly, you should just take my word for this one. It's not even that interesting. The only cool thing is this. Look at Mario flail around. While we're here though, I can show you something truly broken with Shadow Mario. The way Shadow Mario paths is interesting. When Mario gets close to an idle Shadow Mario, a path will be chosen, say, from A to B, and Shadow Mario will run along that path. When Shadow Mario reaches the end of the path and becomes idle again, he'll pick a new path, say, from C to D. The interesting bit is Shadow Mario actually teleports from B to C. You normally can't notice because the paths usually overlap. But there is a path in this level that's so broken, I can't believe it made it into the final game. First, check out this perfectly normal path where Shadow Mario climbs up these platforms. The path ends up at the top and he starts a new path by spin jumping off this platform. Now check out this path. Shadow Mario tries to climb the platforms again, but this time he makes a fatal mistake and drops off this ledge, completely ruining the path and putting him on top of this mushroom. Now when you get close or spray him like I did, Shadow Mario will teleport to the top of the platform and continue on like nothing ever happened. But we know, Shadow Mario. We know. So I've already been over episode three, the Goopy Inferno, in my last Sunshine video. So I'd rather not all over again. But I would like to showcase yet another way to cheat this episode involving damage boosting. Stand on the edge of the goop here and take damage. 
you'll be invulnerable to fire goop for a small period of time, allowing you to get to this mushroom. From here, it's just a matter of getting to dry land in whichever way you like. I personally prefer to damage boost again. This is probably the fastest way to beat this episode, for all you speedrunners out there. Also, as a small aside, this is where I found out the only way to get Mario covered in fire goop is to get hit by our goop jellyfish friends. Looking good Mario, you look great buddy. In episode 8, one of your tasks is to climb the giant tree in the center. Your first thought may be to use the rocket nozzle, but there are two ways to scale this tree with the hover nozzle instead, allowing you to also climb this tree in any episode. The first and easier method is to climb the tree near the bath. Get to the end of this giant leaf, perform a triple jump, and hover over to the leaf of the center tree. Done. For the other method, climb to the second highest mushroom on the center tree. We need to get to the highest mushroom, which seems a bit far off. However, as you might remember, there's an odd exploit in this game where you can use the hover nozzle to ride up slopes. We can use that here, although as an additional oddity, we also ride down the slopes as well. So we have to aim higher than expected. Once we're on the highest mushroom, the rest is easy. Face the trunk of the tree on the right side of the mushroom, and hover right into it. Cool, eh? And finally, I've saved the best for last. Well, maybe not, but it's still pretty good. In episode 6, Piantas in Need, the needy adult Piantas will each give us a blue coin after we save them. If we leave the episode and come back, they'll instead give us a 1-up. But now, what happens if we submerge them with a goop jellyfish and save them again? They'll give us a regular coin. If we save them a third time, coin. Fourth time, coin. Fifth time, coin. That's right. We can theoretically reach the 999 coin limit in Pianta Village. But wait! Don't do this in episode 6. The Piantas in episode 6 don't move. So in order to goop them, we have to stand between them and a goop jellyfish, and then perform a well-timed jump so that the jellyfish lands close enough to the Pianta. It's a total pain. Instead, you should select Episode 3, The Goopy Inferno. However, it comes with a small prerequisite. We're using this Pianta, but if you've already gotten the blue coin from him, he won't be on fire, and he won't give you anything for saving him. So if you're in Episode 3 and this Pianta is on fire, grab Flood and let's get started. Now our jellyfish friends will naturally only spawn over goop, and so we can force them to spawn where we want by limiting the goop on the playing field. The pianta goes in a rectangular path, and while we can't goop them on one end since the goop is... glitched, the other end is just fine. The fastest way to get coins is to set up a chain like pictured here, filling in the spaces with jellyfish as the pianta strolls into his next trap. A successful chain can net you 10 or more coins in less than 4 minutes, making 100 coins possible within an hour, and 999 coins within 7. Theoretically, of course. I only went up to 101 coins to see if it would stop at 100, which it doesn't. Oh, what's this? It's time for a bonus round! There's more? When Mario grabs a Shine Sprite, bees do not despawn! What a stinging discovery! Alright, bonus round over. So that's all I have for you peeps today. Now, this was a pretty experimental video, so your feedback is going to be very helpful in determining if this series will continue and what needs to be changed. Like that title needs some work. So make sure you like and comment so we can push this channel forward. I've got another small sunshine video in the works too, so expect that one shortly. Thank you for watching, and have a great sunshiny day!
But if the sun ain't shining where you are, well, you can just play some sunshine. Buh bye Wow! Wow!